Hello, I'm Afeli. There are quite a few dialog box tutorials on YouTube already, specifically this one is pretty good. But there's a problem with all the other tutorials. They're bad, so I'm gonna make a good one. Let's start by making the dialog box. This part is really easy, so let's speed it up a little. Put a color rect in there, or if you have a texture you can use a texture rack. Position it however you want. Add two rich text labels, one for the name, the other for the actual dialog. Next we'll add this little arrow indicator thing that shows up when it's done revealing the text. Again, you can use whatever you want for this. I'll just use a polygon 2D and give it a little animation. Most games have portraits that show alongside the dialog, so we'll use a sprite for that. Finally, add a timer. We'll use this to control how fast the text shows. Now that we have all the notes we need, let's get into the code. Let's start by making two exported variables. One called dialog path, the other called text speed. We'll use dialog path to get the JSON file that has the dialog we need in it. And text speed is exactly what it sounds like. Then let's make a variable called dialog. In the ready function, write timer.waitTime is text speed. Dialog equals to get dialog. We'll write the get dialog function now. First, we need to check if the file at dialog path exists, so we'll use a file object for that. The assert function checks if this condition is true, and if not, it'll crash the game with this error message. Next, we need to extract the data from the file, so again, we'll use the file object for that. This line opens the file at dialog path, and this will get the data inside the file in text format. Next, we use the parseJSON function to turn our text into a usable variable, in this case an array. And finally, before returning output, we need to check if it's an array, or else we'll get an error. Next, add another assert after that to make sure our getDialog function actually worked, and then we'll move on to the next phrase function, which we'll write now. First, we need a global variable called phraseNum, which will be an integer, and another global variable called finish, which is a boolean. First, we need to check if there's still more dialog that we need to show, so we'll do if phrase num is greater or equal to the length of dialog, delete the dialog box and return. Next, once we're in the next phrase function, we'll set finish to false. The finish variable will tell us if the dialog is done showing or not. After that, we'll set the name and the text to the dialog we're at right now. Make sure when you're doing this that you use BB code text so that if your dialog has BB code tags in it, they'll work properly. So we'll set them both to the dialog number of phrase num and then name or text. After that, we'll set the visible characters of text to zero. A lot of tutorials on YouTube use the percent visible property, which works, but it will show your text at different speeds depending on how long it is. So we'll use the visible characters property instead. After that, write while the visible characters of text is less than the length of the text. And make sure in this length function, you use text and not BB code text, or else it'll take the BB code tags as well. And so it won't work properly. And inside the while loop, write text.visibleCharacters plus equals 1. This will begin showing your text, but it will be way too fast, so we need to add a little bit of delay between each time we show a character. So now is when we need to use the timer. Timer.start, and then yield, timer, timeout. So, what this means is that it'll start the timer, and then this yield function will stop the while loop from running until the timeout signal of timer is emitted. So after that, we can get out of the while loop and write finished is true and phrase num is plus equal to one. So now that our next phrase function is finished, that's the hard part done. So now we're going to detect inputs so that we can continue to the next phrases once it's done. So we're going to check if the space key is pressed. You can use whatever key you want for this, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to use UI accept. So if UI accept is pressed, if it's finished showing the text, next phrase. Now that could be good enough, but a lot of games also have the option to press space while it's still showing to skip straight to the end. So we'll write else text.visibleCharacters is equal to the length of text. And that's the main code done. So now I'll show you how we need to write our JSON files so that this works properly. So navigate to the file system, right click on any of the files and click show in file manager. Now you can add a new JSON file into this directory. So just name it whatever you want. For this tutorial, I'll just call it dialog0.json. You can open this with pretty much any text editor, but I'll use Visual Studio Code in this tutorial. So in the JSON file, we'll put in an array, and inside the array, we'll have one object, which is basically just a dictionary for JSONs. So each one of these will represent one of the phrases that we'll show when we call next phrase. So inside the object, we'll write name is, I'll just use my name, Ofeli, and text is, hello, I'm Ofeli. And that's basically what it looks like. And then if you want to add another phrase, you just do a comma and then copy paste it, and then change the text to be whatever you want. 
and the name to be whatever you want if you want somebody else to talk. So that's how the JSONs look. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Once you're done writing your JSON, you need to go back into Godot and change dialog path to the path of your JSON. So that could be good enough for you, but I want to add portraits since a lot of games have them. First of all, we need to actually get some pictures that we'll use for the portraits. So I'll just use these three I made earlier, called Afeli Happy, Afeli Neutral, and Afeli Sad. So once you have your pictures, we'll go into the next phrase function and add anywhere before the while loop this code here. So what this does is it uses another file object to check if the file exists at the name of the character that's speaking plus the emotion that this character is feeling dot png. And if that's true, then it'll set the portrait texture to that image. And if not, then it'll just set it to null so there will be no portrait. So that's all the code we need for portraits. Now we can just go into our JSON, and inside of every object, we need to add one more keyword, emotion, and then whatever emotion it is. So you want to use the emotions you wrote at the end of your PNG names. So mine's called Afeli Happy, so I'll write, the name is Afeli, and the emotion is happy. Make sure there's no spelling errors, or else it won't work. And so yeah, that's all for this tutorial. Um, I think this system is pretty good, it's pretty customizable, and you can use BB code tags, you can use different portraits and things, and it's, and it's really easy to change your JSON file fast so that you can check your dialog boxes quickly, since you don't need to go into the code and change anything if you change your JSON. So if you like this video, please do not smash that like button, and do not subscribe, and definitely don't ring that bell. So, thank you for watching, that's all, and uh...